the community does have expectations of business. So the idea that business will merely pursue profits and profits in the short term with, without adequate regard and sensible and fair regard for what the impact is on their customers or their workers or their communities or on countries or the environment, that idea, I think, is just gone. It is not okay for a business leader to say in public, we care, or even say in public, we're very sorry, without actually looking at the systems that are in place that are driving the least rewarded people in the organisation to continue to behave in these sorts of ways. These executives, these CEOs need to be taking their own position far more seriously. They need to be really looking at the leadership that they are offering and they need to be looking at organisational structures as well as the values and cultures that they are developing. It's very important is uh, about organisations uh, looking to what to see how they can actually uh, con contribute to, to the world. What we've sort of seen in the ascent of the corporation has been aspects of greed, exploitation, extraction of resources, environmental pollution as another side effect of corporations being unfettered and uncontrolled. Trust is a big issue um, today in terms of trust in governments, trust in regulators, trust in businesses. And like everything, there's lots of causes. There's lots more information, there's lots more tools out there, there's lots more monitoring of what governments and businesses and institutions do. Many people, I suppose, are surprised by the amount of what's been revealed in the Hain Royal Commission, and it's still early days until we get a final report. But we seem to have moved from reports to date from it's just a few rotten apples to there are some systemic issues to deal with here. We're seeing that there's a need to improve in how we manage structural conflicts of interest, the corporate governance of banks and other organisations, and the amount of regulatory oversight. Too often I think banks are just after that quick buck and the way they've set up their systems and processes provides that incentive to get that sale at any cost. We wanted to tell the Royal Commission that responsible lending standards, the way our big banks uh, decide to make loans is inadequate and failing many people. Consumer Action was approached by Nalini a couple of years ago she had purchased a car in a car yard. Unfortunately, that finance broker did not follow appropriate processes in checking whether that loan was affordable for her. And she was quickly approved for a car loan that was going to be difficult for her to pay. I was shocked and I know I can't afford to pay that. Nothing was explained to me. He just, most of the time he was over on the phone and then only the last period of time he asked me to sign and that's it. So what happened then? Every now and then I, I'll, I'll go to my uncle's house and he'll lend me money to catch up with the payments. And I also had my, my brother used to help me. I also sold like, you know, jewelries, like was given to me by my mom and also jewelries for my sons given by my mom. All I sold in a, like a cash converter shop like that, just to catch up with their payments. Yeah. Most of the community don't see these cases. They don't see the hardship that can be caused by a, a loan um, uh, that is unaffordable. Um, the, the, the lengths people go to to try and keep up repayments. You get the impression that part of the response of the banks from the Royal Commission has been, well, what we really need are more rules, better rules, and implement, enforce these rules better. And in most cases, these rules are about the compliance of the most junior of employees. The goal ends up being to achieve the KPI or to achieve the particular um, compliance behaviour rather than the thinking about the reasons why those KPIs were there to start with, why those rules were there to start with. 
what I can see that's happening is that risks and responsibilities are moving down to the lowest levels in the organisation, while those at the highest level of the organisation continue to reap huge rewards. The rise of uh, what's particularly called the platform economy, uh, where essentially people are on zero hours contracts, people don't have permanent employment, people are forced being forced to sort of very flexibly provide services. Uh, it is arising because there's actually a consumer demand for it. We've seen a big shift in the profit share relative to the labour share within our economy. And I think what's actually going on there is business models are emerging that are ultra efficient. They're getting that efficiency by not having to meet decent standards for their workers, or they're not having to meet the same standards in terms of regulatory standards of health and safety or environmental standards. And we need to understand that that's a false economy, that that expectation that we're gonna have continually better products and continually cheaper products, at some point butts up against the reality of what that means for the workers involved, what that means for communities, what that means for people's level of security and wellbeing. We shouldn't think about making money and acting ethically as a choice. We need to be doing both. And many business people who work inside companies would say that's what they're trying to do. The aim here should be, how do we approach principled behaviour in companies and a principled treatment of employees, creditors, customers, suppliers, everyone else who might benefit from a company as well as be affected by it. A civil society aims at that kind of goal and we need laws and practices that support that goal. What we're seeing is laws and regulations coming in that are making corporate social responsibility, licence to operate, part of the DNA of how businesses are regulated and what they do. We're also seeing the Australian government bringing in from mid-2018 a modern slavery reporting requirement so that companies are required to report upon what they're doing to make sure that they're not benefiting from modern slavery up and down their supply and distribution chain. Most significantly for all businesses listed on the stock exchange in Australia, the ASX Corporate Governance Council has proposed that for 2019, in various ways, the social licence to operate will be part of the corporate governance standards that operate for all companies on the stock exchange. It's easier to register a company than it is to open a bank account or get a mobile phone contract. So one of the things we are proposing is that when people go to register the company, a company for the first time, that they be asked to provide 100 points of identification and they be allocated a unique director identification number. So that then, down the track, if they're involved in companies that have failed, um, ASIC will easily be able to call up that information. So it will make detection of multiple corporate failures easier. Phoenix activity occurs when the controllers of a company, and we call that company Old Co, is heading towards insolvency. Immediately prior or, or sometime before that happens, the controllers transfer the assets from that company to a new company that we call New Co um, without paying for them. So New Co then has the advantage of Old Co's assets and the creditors and employees of Old Co are left holding the can. Their debts are not paid. In 2012, PricewaterhouseCoopers did a study for the Fair Work Ombudsman where they estimated that the cost to the Australian economy is somewhere between $1.8 and $3.1 billion every year. That's the overall damage from Phoenix activity, but of course, in each individual instance, you've got a number of unsecured creditors who are not paid and employees who lose their jobs and are not paid their entitlements. And we've found that the biggest creditor is the tax office. And when the tax office is not paid, it means that, that you and I end up having to pay more taxes to compensate for it. We're very pleased because both the government and the opposition have, in the last 12 months or so, both supported that recommendation. So we're hoping to see it eventually become law. Something quite fundamental has changed in Australia. Those at the frontier are already diversifying their board and governance structures. They're already actively engaging in questions that surround them that are not merely part of the business, but are actually part of the community conversation. So the best businesses are already here. Uh, the issue is really how do we make many more businesses like that? 
How do we pull many more businesses into spaces where they're thinking longer term, where they're engaging with their workforces and their communities and the sets of social and environmental problems of the world that they live in and going to operate in? Because business as usual is what is being exposed as not good enough for most people in our community.